you're new to Linux or are looking for a change from your current OS, these distributions in this collection are easily among the best options right now in 2021. The list covers many different experience levels and usages. So whether you're a system admin, developer or desktop user, you're bound to find something to interest you. At the very least, I can give you a few choices to eliminate on the way to find the perfect one for you. So let's get started. Arch Linux, customizable. Arch Linux has grown to become one of the leading Linux distros since its launch back in 2002. The distro is alarmingly minimal in its default state, somewhat daunting for the beginner, but offers an unmatched level of customization for the more experienced user. From the start, it's apparent this is not an easy first Linux. There's no default desktop environment, so you can choose to create one that's best suited for your personal tastes and the power of your PC, provided that is that you know what you're asking for and the choices you face are the ones that you're familiar with. The minimum requirements of Arch Linux are only 512 megabytes of RAM and some flavor of x64 CPU, so it can run relatively light if you need it to. As far as software goes, you have an enormous amount of apps to suit almost every purpose. Music creation, productivity, communications, video editing, you name it. The user interface is clean and organised and very professional. OK, it's not the simplest of Linux distros to get your head around, given how much it leaves in the user's hands to figure out. But the documentation is very good and the sporadic nature of releases means your custom tweaked desktop environment won't deprecate very quickly. For more in-depth details in this great distro, check out our Arch Linux review. Link in the description. Linux Mint. Easy. OK, so Arch is tricky if you're a complete beginner, but what would be better? If you're fresh to the whole Linux business, then it's natural to feel a little bit overwhelmed if you're migrating over from a more conventional operating system like Windows or Mac OS. For that reason, you may want to start simple, and Linux Mint is the simplest one of them all. Mint comes pre-packed with much of the software that you need to get straight back into your workflow, such as LibreOffice and some decent onboard media software. You have a choice of four main desktop environments, with Cinnamon being the most popular and Windows-like with its pseudo start menu down the left-hand side. Although for some, Mate remains a popular choice. It's pretty light resource-wise, loading a lot faster and using far less memory than popular big box Ubuntu systems. But despite that, you won't be left out because Mint is always in sync with the latest Ubuntu LTS releases, meaning you won't need to worry about being left out in the cold during zero-day scares or malware outbreaks. Well, no more than regular Ubuntu users anyway. You're well supported and secure. The default desktop is very clean and fresh and everything is laid out neatly. Nobody's going to get confused or lost using this distro. Some might also recommend Ubuntu or elementary OS in this usage. But for a variety of reasons, both look and feel and support and lightweight, I'll stick with Linux Mint if you don't mind. Tails. Privacy. Privacy was a strange concept to most people a while ago, but in the 21st century, this is one usage that's becoming more and more important. As the years go by and as technology becomes more tightly woven into our everyday lives, it all boils down to what is known as your threat model. Tails is a Debian-based Linux distro that comes pre-configured to use the Tor network. Tor is a public decentralized network that allows users to send and receive traffic through several relays. The concept is simple. Each relay has its own IP address, which hides the original location of the user by creating several layers, hence the Onion logo. This is especially useful for privacy-conscious individuals or users within countries that have oppressive governments. As well as this, Tails is designed to be run from portable storage, meaning that you can carry it around with you and it only uses your RAM and leaves no permanent traces of what you've been up to. On top of all this, you can save data on your portable media as a persistent volume, so it's like a tiny self-contained computer that you can keep on you at all times. Software-wise, you have a nice large selection of apps with most types of sound, music and video and productivity applications catered for comfortably. As far as the desktop is concerned, Tails is a little different. It has menus at the top of the screen. That's the thing with desktop environments. Although they can be customised, your choice depends on details like this. Where are the menus? How do you access programs? How do you search? It's mostly a matter of taste rather than technical elegance. Tails is different in several other ways too. It knows things about the security of your machine. For example, running it on a virtual machine, it warned me of this and how virtual machines are open to being insecure as the OS can't be fully in charge of the security of the machine. This is very reassuring. It's a very clean and simple interface and it shouts security and calm. 
It comes with a bunch of privacy-based encrypted tools like an instant messenger, KeyPassX, password manager, and email encryption tools. Crucially, LibreOffice is there for most of your productivity needs. Tails is the kind of OS that James Bond would use. Bode Linux. Legacy machines. Despite the rise of the tablet, there are still users who have lighter legacy netbooks and who want to make use of open source software. Also, people like to repurpose older machines that can be given new life and a fresh open source OS. A great distro for these usages is Bode Linux. While it is at heart a derivative of Ubuntu, you wouldn't know it just by looking at it. It's been remixed, shall we say. It is, however, in my view, a useful and elegant lightweight distro featuring Moksha, an Enlightenment 17-based desktop environment. But along with the polished desktop, Bodhi also offers a minimal install, which gives users free access to customise their user experience quite easily. Bodhi offers a variety of ISO files, and in particular, it can be installed on Chromebooks and legacy devices. In terms of software, it's quite comprehensive. Pretty much all the basics you'd like, as befits a presumably underpowered legacy laptop. There's not as large a range as for other more general distros, but it will very much do. I love the cleanliness of the desktop and the mild green tinge to the colour palette adds a nice matrixy vibe. There are many options for breathing new life into old devices, but Bode Linux is certainly a very good choice. Gentoo. Experienced users. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. This is the old school. Capital O, capital S. Gentoo might seem like an odd choice if you paid attention to all the memes and noise around it. Gentoo is no joke, though. It's easily the most flexible distribution around, and you can configure it to be as stable or as leading edge as you need it to be. Essentially, Gentoo is whatever you make it, a lot like Arch Linux, but it is not for beginners. Not at all. Gentoo is a source-based distribution, meaning you compile every package that you install from its source code when you install it. While this does take time and is a finicky process, it presents an opportunity to customise every package to meet your needs. If you are of a hackish frame of mind, in the old school sense, then this is one for you. Gentoo doesn't make any decisions for you, not even for something like Systemd. If you don't want it, you don't need it. The downside of all this, of course, is that you need to know what you want. So if you're a beginner or an intermediate user, it's a really hard slog to get it up and running the way you might like it. It's powerful, very powerful, but as Spider-Man will tell you, with great power comes great responsibility and a learning curve the size of a rhinoceros. Let's just say, if you decide to go down this route and you can get over the huge learning curve, after that there's nothing you can't handle. So, that's my roundup of the choices in Linux distros in 2021. What are your thoughts about the choices? I'm pretty sure you have some. Do you have better alternatives for each usage? And if so, can you tell us why? Let us know in the comments section below. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.